Hello, this is Meep, and welcome to Meep's Math Matters. Today I'm going to prove the infinitude of primes. Okay, you may be looking at this. Um, what are primes? And uh, what do you mean by infinitude? Okay, let me start with the definition of prime numbers. So prime numbers are whole numbers that are divisible only by two numbers, exactly two numbers, one in themselves. Okay, so let me list a few to give you an idea what I mean by prime numbers. We have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, then we have 29, 31, and it goes on. Okay, so I'm doing the prime numbers in order. Look at, okay, first of all, you notice there's 2. There's no other even numbers because all other even numbers are divisible by 2. Okay, so when you have another number, you can factor it as a product of prime numbers you, that you can show it as a bunch of prime numbers multiplied by each other. And I will talk about that another time, not right now. The question is, though, as I'm making this list that came naturally to people when they first discovered the significance of prime numbers is, is there a limit to this list? Is there some largest prime number? Is there a finite number of prime numbers? And as they looked into it, this, and this is, goes back to at least the ancient Greeks, because Euclid has a proof, and I'm going to show Euclid's proof that there's an infinite number of primes, meaning there is no limit to this list. I'd have to keep writing on and on and on. So let's look at a proof of this to show that there is no limit to this list of prime numbers. So we want to prove that the number of primes is infinite. And the method I'm going to use, and there are several ways to prove this, by the way, but what I'm going to show is the simplest proof for this. And the method I'm going to use is called proof by contradiction. It also goes by the Latin handle reductio ad absurdum, which means you're reducing it to the absurd. What you do when you do proof by contradiction is you assume the opposite of what you want to prove and then by going through logical steps, starting with that original assumption, you end up with a contradiction of some sort or some absurdity that will show that your original assumption cannot possibly be true. Okay, because if it were true, one equals two, cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria, okay, so this is the concept. There are a bunch of people who don't like proof by contradiction. I'm not one of those people. And the infinitude of primes is the classic example of a proof by contradiction. Okay, so what we do is we start with our assumption. Okay, we want to prove we have an infinite number of primes. So I want to assume the opposite, finite number of primes. Again, what does that mean? That means I can make a list, P1, P2, you know, up to some P capital N, and that would be all the primes. Okay, if there's a finite number, I can make a finite list, and I can put them in order. There's all the primes. That means there's a largest prime number. And I'm going to call it P. So this is my capital P. And what about this backwards E? What's that? That's math terminology. I want to get you used to math terminology. It means there exists. Okay, so there exists a capital P that is a largest prime number. That is if our original assumption is true. Okay, there's a largest prime number. Now we're going to do something with this prime number. What I'm going to do is make a new number. I'm going to call it M. And I'm going to set that equal to 2 or 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 
So we're going to multiply all the numbers together up to that largest prime number, p, and then I'm going to add 1. I'm going to teach you a little more na math notation. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, etc., up to p is written as p exclamation point. It's very excited. Um, it's called p factorial plus 1. So factorial is when you're multiplying 1 times 2 all the way up to the number that you're interested in. Okay, uh, factorial will appear several times again through uh, the, these demonstrations I give because it, it shows up in a lot of places. Okay, so now I have my number m. Now I have a question. What is m divisible by? Well, let's go through our numbers. Is, well, obviously it's divisible by 1. Okay, does 2 divide into m? Well, if you divide it, okay, 2 into m, okay, 2 into 2 times a bunch of stuff plus 1, well, you can cancel those two out. You, you end up with a remainder of 1. Because p factorial is a multiple of 2. That means 2 divides into p factorial. But I added 1, so I have a remainder of 1. So 2 doesn't divide into m. Maybe you see where this is going. Does 3 divide into m? Again, you end up with a remainder of 1. 3 divides into p factorial. But then you have that 1 left over. Again, maybe you see where this is going. I try all the numbers, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., up to p. Well, does p divide into m? No. It's a remainder of 1. Oops. Again, p is divides into p factorial. And when I divide into it, I end up with a remainder of 1. So what does this mean? This means if anything divides into m, it has to be greater than p, other than 1. So I state that this means, okay, anything that divides into m, it must be greater than p. Again, this is other than 1. That means there has to be a prime number greater than p, okay? Because if something divides into m, and it itself is not a prime number, well, it must be divisible by one of those previous prime numbers, one of those previous numbers. So no matter the way you look at it, there must be, or say, there must exist, I use that notation again, there exists a q, greater than p, where q is prime. It doesn't have to be that m itself. Therefore, I have my contradiction. p can't be the largest prime. Okay, these two arrows heading against each other, that means I have reached a contradiction. So that means my original assumption must be false. Let's look back at our original assumption that led to the contradiction. Our original assumption was there's a finite number of primes. We've reached a contradiction, so that means this has got to be wrong. This is false. So if there's not a finite number of primes, that means there is an infinite number of primes. QED. Quote or demonstratum. That's what I wanted to prove, and I proved it. Okay, I'm paraphrasing here. As always, you can contact me, marypat.campbell, at gmail.com. And remember to spread the math love.